We've just returned from our first ever cruise. How did we get on? Let's find out. Hi everyone and welcome to our very first cruise review. We spent seven nights on the Morella Explorer, cruising around the Canaries and visiting the Moroccan city of Agadir. We flew from Manchester to Tenerife, a flight of around four and a half hours, and on landing and after we collected our luggage, we were transferred via bus to Santa Cruz, around 45 minutes away. It was here that we boarded the ship. We had booked the Canarian Flavours Cruise, which offered overnight sailing, daily port visits, and one full day at sea. Our itinerary included stops at Tenerife, Gran Canaria, Fortaventura, Agadir in Morocco, Lanzarote and La Gomera, before concluding our journey back to Santa Cruz after seven days at sea. The Explorer, originally built in 1996, underwent a complete refit in 2018, with 13 decks, 962 cabins and a capacity to accommodate nearly 2,000 passengers, it offers ample space and comfort for its guests. It is smaller compared to some of the cruise ships sailing today, but still impressive nonetheless. Unlike a hotel, you are able to select your actual cabin at the time of booking. We went for a balcony cabin on deck 9, cabin number 9055. The cabins were bigger than we expected and appointed to a good standard. There was a large bed, plenty of storage and a private balcony big enough for two people to comfortably sit and enjoy the view. The bathroom was more than adequate with a good shower, toilet and basin. Again, all that you would expect in a good hotel room. The cabins are cleaned daily and there is also a nightly turn down service. Additionally, every evening guests are provided with cruise news, the ship's newsletter, providing all the latest information about the upcoming 24 hours on board. The facilities on board are impressive, with plenty of food and drink options, swimming pools, shops, entertainment and lots more. The food and drink were definitely one of the highlights of the cruise, offering plenty of options to suit everyone's tastes. There are five restaurants included at no extra cost and five more available for a fee. There's also a 24 hour room service, again available for a small fee. The Marketplace is a buffet restaurant open from 7am to 1am every day. It's your typical hotel buffet with plenty of options at any time of the day. There's lots of seating but it can feel a little hectic at times. Latitude 53 is the main waiter service restaurant, serving breakfast, lunch and dinner. The food here was excellent, as was the service. The menu included daily specials, so there was always something new on offer. It's worth knowing that you could sometimes get queues forming at popular times. For example, breakfast at 9am was particularly popular. Luckily, we are early risers and had no trouble walking straight into a table at 8am. Vista is a dinner-only Italian restaurant, again with a full waiter service. It's a beautiful restaurant with great food. This could also get busy, but if you haven't booked, then they give you a buzzer and you will be called when your table is ready. Italian at the Mediterranean is open for lunch and dinner, and as the name suggests, they serve great pasta and pizza dishes made to your individual taste. It's more laid back than Vista, but the food is great. I can definitely recommend the Calzone. On deck 11 you'll find the Snack Shack, offering a range of grab and go lunches. There was lots on offer here during our week on board, including fish and chips, chicken strips, pies, pizzas and lots more. It's perfect for that quick bite around the pool. We ate at two of the five extra charge restaurants, the Asian inspired Corolla and the Surf and Turf Steakhouse. Both were excellent and worth the £35 per person upgrade. Corolla was superb and easily my favourite meal of the cruise. If you enjoy Chinese, Southeastern Asia or Indian cuisine, then this is really a no-brainer. We also enjoyed our meal at the Surf and Turf. It wasn't just steak but lamb chops, chicken and fish on offer too. As with all the restaurants, the service was first class. Tapas at the Mediterranean does exactly what it says on the tin. We tried to book this but unfortunately we left it too late. The menu looked great, particularly the meat and veg skewers. A recent addition to the Explorer is the sushi bar, where you can watch as fresh sushi is expertly prepared at the table. Finally, the dining club is a fine dining experience in lovely surroundings. It also offers afternoon tea and other events, 
check on board for more details. If you are interested in booking additional restaurants, then I would recommend doing so before you board the ship to avoid disappointment, especially since the more popular ones tend to fill up quite quickly. You can do this via the TUI Cruise Control website. On board there are 10 bars catering to various tastes and moods. From the casual pool bar to the Mediterranean bar offering great cocktails or the Squid and Anchor pub for a pint, there's something for everyone. The Mediterranean bar was our favourite. It had both indoor and outdoor areas and was a great place to enjoy a sundowner at the end of the day. Again, there was regular entertainment with acoustic and piano artists. The Squid and Anchor has the real feel of a British seaside pub. There is a good selection of drinks on offer and there is regular entertainment too. We use the lounge bar both pre and post dinner. It's a lively spot with plenty of seating and live entertainment. The Indigo Bar is a quiet place in the daytime and a disco venue in the evenings. If all of this sounds hectic, then please be assured that there are plenty of quiet corners and outside spaces to enjoy a quiet drink on board. Finally, if you need your daily fix of coffee, then you can visit the coffee bar on deck 6, providing a full barista service along with teas and hot chocolates. They also offer cakes and confectionery items for an additional charge. The entertainment on board is first class. The main venue is a 1,000 seat theatre dedicated to high quality productions from the in-house team and visiting acts. There are drinks available on your way in and the shows are on twice a night so everyone gets a chance to enjoy them. There is also live music in many of the bars, not only in the evening but also throughout the day. Outside of musical acts there is fun and games in both the pub and around the pool bar every day. It's a mix of quizzes, bingo and deck games. And for those that like a flutter, there's also a small casino on board too. The ship's pool area has two small pools and three jacuzzis, with the pools filled with seawater. The main sun decks are on decks 11 and 12, and whilst this area is small, with many passengers opting to leave the ship each day, we had no trouble getting a sunbed. On the full sea day, things are obviously busier, but if you are unlucky not to get a sunbed, then there are plenty of other decks where you can enjoy the sun, so do explore the ship. There is a full pool drink service on these decks with plenty of waiters to take your order and deliver your favourite drink. And there's a pool bar too. The ship really is a floating town with lots of facilities available. There's a number of duty free shops selling jewellery, spirits, clothes and more. The shops are only open when the ship is at sea and it's also worth noting that the entire ship is cashless and any purchases are added to your account and paid for at the end of your cruise. Also on board there's a fully equipped gym with great views and a spa offering a range of treatments. If that's not enough then you can also catch a film at the onboard cinema. For those more active there's a small football pitch, mini golf, a gaming room and a quiet room for reading. There's also a kids club and a dedicated room for teenagers, the hideout. If you need any information or assistance then there's a 24 hour reception area. You can also get lots of information from the self-service terminals where you can get a range of information about excursions, the ship or even just checking what you've spent on your account. As we mentioned at the start of this review, apart from one full day at sea, the ship docks at a different port every day. You have the opportunity to leave the ship and explore the local area or you could go on one of TUI's paid excursions. You have to be back on board at a particular time but all the information you need is provided before you disembark. You are usually off the ship around 9am and the earliest we were asked to be back was 3.30 in the afternoon and the latest was 10 at night. We got off the ship a few times and had a great time exploring various places both new and old in the Canary Islands. Some highlights included a day on the beach at Porto del Rosaro, although there was little much else in this town apart from the beautiful beach. Lunch in historic Arrecife, the capital of Lanzarote. This is a great place to visit and soak up the history and culture on offer. A particular highlight was a visit to La Gomera, an island we have wanted to visit for many years. The town is delightful with a range of small shops and welcoming bars. We also had time to climb to the Cristo de Sebastian statue. It's a proper hike over rocky terrain and shouldn't be underestimated, but the views from the top are stunning. The ship also offers guided excursions for an additional fee. And we decided to take this option when we docked in Agadir in Morocco. We had read mixed reviews of Agadir, but after attending a presentation on board about what to expect, we took up the option of a guided tour. The tour included a visit to a Moroccan show with traditional dancing, acrobats and snake charmers, 
a trip to a very impressive souk, a large market where you can try your hand at Bartrin, and the large citadel with stunning views of the coastline and surrounding area. Overall, it was definitely worth the £45 per person fee. So what did we like about our first cruise? Number one, the staff. The staff on board were brilliant. Without exception, all of the staff on board made us feel welcome and nothing was too much trouble for them. Secondly, we really enjoyed waking up in a different place every day. Although we're familiar with the Canaries, the cruise allowed us to discover new places and visit some destinations we've wanted to see for a while. Finally, we loved the laid-back feel of the cruise. We've heard that some cruises can be quite formal, but that was not our experience of the Explorer. For example, each week they host a dress to impress night where those who want to can put on their best attire, but it's not compulsory and you can still get into all the restaurants following the normal dress code. I wore tailored shorts and a polo shirt to dinner most evenings. So what didn't we like about our first cruise? Dealing with some of the TUI admin, for example, online check-in for our flights was not available until I phoned them. Also, we were asked to print a ship boarding pass and bring this with us, but we were never asked for it at any point. The Wi-Fi was expensive. The cheapest option is £15 and I managed to use that in under one hour. I would suggest that it's better to use your data on your mobile. We did however put our phones on airplane mode each night just in case the ship was outside of the European region. Finally, there were a couple of nights with choppy waters. My wife sadly suffered some seasickness, so do be prepared for this. So would we go on a cruise again? I've personally wanted to go on a cruise for a while, but was concerned as my wife suffers seasickness. That said, she got it under control and I think we'll be fine for another cruise at some point. So yes, we would cruise again and love the low-key approach of the Morella line. Here are the key facts for the Morella Explorer. Do let us know in the comments if there are any additional cruise facts you would find helpful. Our aim is to provide helpful information to inform your holiday. We hope you've enjoyed this review, thanks for watching and if you have any questions or feedback then please leave us a message in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help the channel grow. We've got many more reviews planned so subscribe to make sure you get notified of any new reviews. We look forward to seeing you again in another video.